Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, but the things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody out there listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Steve Harvey will oh, oh, oh. oh, yes, Steve Harvey, why don't you join oh, yeah. me? Uh-huh. I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You all listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. Man, got a radio show because God is in the blessing business. I just happen to be a recipient. I just happen to got a couple of things right. Um, And man, his grace and mercy carries you the rest of the way. All you got to do is get a couple of things right, and then his grace and his mercy will take over. His favor, his love of you, it's it's already evident. I mean, you know, because so many times we go along without even acknowledging him or conferring with him in our decisions, and, and we look up and we find ourselves in a predicament, and he always comes comes to the rescue. He always manages to show up. He's never too late. He's never one minute too late. And so uh, in light of this today, I wanted to talk to you about something. I, I, it's, it's another principle of success um, that I'd like to share with uh, everybody this morning. And once again, these are not things that you don't know or you've never heard before. These are just reminders along the way. And one of the things you have to be conscious of is Don't be afraid to change. Don't be afraid to change because change is coming anyway. See, I I have a theory. Don't be afraid to change because change is coming anyway. You know, everything changes. Nothing remains the same. Nothing. And change is inevitable. Now, you can participate in the change or you can react to the change. Are you following me? You can participate in the change or you can react to the change. But don't be afraid to change because change is coming anyway. Now, what I mean by that is this. In participating in the change or reacting in the change, there is a difference. See, if you react to the change, that means the change has occurred and now you have to make the necessary adjustments to the change. Example, the boss walks in, you think your job is good, the boss walks in and hands you a pink slip. That right there, that's a change. Now, you didn't participate in this change because you didn't ask for the pink slip, but now you got to react to the pink slip. Whenever you have to react to the change, it's an adjustment period. It almost throws you off. So change is going to come. 
It always does. You can participate or you can react. Or, let's say, your boss comes in and hands you the pink slip and you said, you know what? I've been preparing for this day. Always knew nothing lasts forever. I've been working on the sideline on the business idea I had. And I had, or I had several other applications in around town. I was just holding off to see what was going go on. So when they hand you the pink slip, the transition, the adjustment you make is a lot more smoother transition because now you just transition into your new business idea that you've been working on. Are you transitioning to the apps you already had in or the contacts you made, the preparation for when the day they come in and hand you the pink slip? Well, Steve, what if they surprise you with it? This is just one example I'm giving you. So, you know, let's let's not nitpick the message. So what I'm saying to everybody is don't be afraid to change because change is coming anyway. So many people are stuck in a rut because of your, our refusal to change. I was hell bent on a certain thing going a certain way, and this is how it was going to go. Well, that that I was thinking didn't really fit. Now, in my own personal experience, this may not be yours, but in my own personal experience, the things that I've had the most trouble letting go of was something I wanted. When I line myself up with the will of God to ask God what he wanted for me, you understand, those things came a lot more easy to me. Because it was in the will of God. It was what God wanted me to do, too. Okay, see, what you mean by that? Okay, here we go. When things were going wrong in in relationships for me, what I did was the biggest mistake I've ever made was I attempted to fix what was wrong in my relationship outside of the relationship. You feel me? Okay. So I'm out there working my groove like I want to. Well, now, guess what? There's a cause and effect for all of that, too. Your house ain't going to get better. It can't. And then that leaves room for some other things. And so now, when the change come, guess what? I got to react to it now. I got I to gotta, I gotta have a reaction to it. Had I lined myself up in the will of God, the transition may have gone differently. It could have still ended the relationship, but guess what? Some of the pain I was in, I ain't had to go through. I bought a lot on myself. Sometimes you're pursuing a passion of yours. And what God really wants you to do is pursue your gift. So now you're pursuing your passion, right? You're passionate about golf. You love golf so much, you just determined. But now you done messed around. You ain't made it on the PGA Tour yet. And you 45 still talking about I'm going to play on the PGA Tour. Really? Okay. Maybe you ain't as good as this you think. Or maybe you're not as gifted as you think. Maybe you pursuing a passion. Sometimes, man, we have to change. And we have to ask God what is his will. His will is much simpler. It's a simpler road. Not going to be easier. It's simpler. See, when I wake up now, It's simple for me to wake up because I know there are a few things that I have to do. I have to click this mic on. I have to be positive. I have to be inspirational. I have to be informative. I have to be uplifting. Got it. That's what he wants. All I got to do is sit down, close my eyes, ask God to help me be who he wants me to be. And for the most part, he tell me what to say. Now, guess what he's done, though, to create this in me? I went through enough things in my life. I had enough challenges. I made plenty of mistakes. So I, now, at my age, I can turn around and tell somebody listening to me, okay, this is what I did. This is a mistake I made. Maybe you see yourself in this story right here. Maybe you don't have to go this way. Or this is what I've learned about becoming successful. Here's a principle that I learned. But then guess what? I had to be unsuccessful to get it, though, didn't I? So you can't have a testimony without a test. Change is coming. It's inevitable. You can participate or you can react. I much prefer to participate in the change. All right, let's go. 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. On this very blessed morning, I would like to start with a song by Edwin Starr. But I will not start with that song called War. Huh. Good God. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. I've changed my mind. Hit it. War. Uh. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. I did it. <laughs> Against my better judgment. But I do want to say war. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. You there has right got that. to be a way to resolve this without the loss of human life. True yes, that. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Has Three to that. be. Yeah. Has to be. This is horrible. It's horrific what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the world we live in, which makes me more than happy that I have relationship with my Heavenly Father that keeps me in peace. I feel safe tucked under his wings, no matter what this world may bring. Mm. I strongly suggest if you want to have that same type of feeling, to form yourself a relationship with the Most High. He is available. He is open to being called by several names and worship in different ways, but he is available for you. I strongly suggest you take a close look. Ladies and gentlemen, Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, Mississippi Monica, Junior is back, and Nephew Tommy. Junior? Well, you been out for a while. You had a lot of time to think. Yeah, um, I I I got (laughs) to... Got a got a got a question for you this morning, uh, cause you uh-huh. said, I just want I just want to talk to Ignis Steve just for a minute. Just mm-hmm. let me ask you this, Unc. At sixty five, yeah, at sixty five, <laughs> Unc. Do you would you still fight with your friends? Do you like if they got into a fight? Would you just jump in at sixty five? Would you still do that now? Like mm. you talking about if my friends is fighting? Yeah. Do you as celebrity as you is? Would you jump in the fight? If my friends is fighting somebody that that I don't know, yeah, I have no choice. At sixty five, I have no choice. And we can't we can't get back home and your ass didn't get in here with us. <laughs> no, I can't. I'm just saying, I, family that's, feud. That's your behind. That's family your behind feud, Steve. <laughs> all of that. No, no. Judge the old, Steve. The old me uh-huh. has to do what he was raised to do. I have a code and an honor that I live by. And I, they, if this my friend and you jump on my friend and I see it, you ain't just jumped on my friend. You jumped on both of us. And all my friends got hands. <laughs> all of them. They, are, they slower hands now. They don't have no fast twitch muscle. It's going to be a funny-ass <laughs> fight on film. <laughs> but it's going to be a damn fight on <laughs> Man, look, I'm old. look how slow they punching. But the effort is there, though. All right. <laughs> Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, the pastors and church complaints on this Monday, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, it is that time. It's Monday, and you know what that means. It is time for church complaints from Reverend Motown and Deacon Def Jam. We, again, we gather most bodaciously Ah. where we intemplicate of bringing about gregarious change. Lord, and I implode you to Mm, come with me as we fontificate Mm. and further Prolificate, Lord have mercy. That boy can speak. Body this boy. thing that we call a sermon, ladies mm-hmm. and gentlemen, without indiacable difference. Yeah. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Mm-hmm. Without pituitiveness, Come I present here, to you my benevolent Deacon Death Jail. Come oh, on, that boy can. 
Lord Jesus. All right, Pastor, let's get Word down it. to it. Uh, the, it. Uh, the Ashy Ministry are having a Luberderm party and want you to be the guest speaker. Uh, the theme this year is Sassy and Ashy. They, will you speak, Pastor? That's what they ask it. What do asses have to do with Luberderm? <laughs> Ashy, Pastor. Ashy. Ashy. Oh, I thought you said ashy. No, it's the Ashy Ministry. The Ashy. Oh, Ashy. Because I was yeah. going to say that's got to be Sister Perkins or uh, <laughs> Jocelyn Baker. Uh, if you were talking about the Ashes Ministry, I, okay. my, my mistake. I'm so sorry. Uh, y'all can do whatever y'all want to do. Uh, you, What did you say about Luberderm Deacon? It's a Luberderm party, and they, the theme is sassy and ashy. They want you to speak at, at the party. But if you, Well, is there a speaker fee? Uh, that I don't know. I, well, I, I mean, got, is, is Luberderm the sponsor? I think, I, I think so. I think Luberderm then I'm gonna is need the sponsor. Then I'm going to need a, some smooth cash. Because <laughs> <laughs> they got a lot of money. I'll be sure and let them know. I'll be sure and Thank let you. them know, Pastor. Thank you, the beautiful people. All right. Uh, beautiful Sister, people uh, at Luberder. Yeah. Sister Rosetta Beasley uh, wrote a book called The Woman on the Porch Down the Street from the Liquor Store Next to the Church Parking Lot. Uh, <laughs> that's the book. I can't wait to read it. <laughs> yeah. That, that's the name of her book. It's called The Woman on the Porch Down the Street from the Liquor Store Next to the Church Parking Lot. She's asking uh, if Steve Harvey could hook her up with uh, Simon & Schuster uh, Publishing Company. Do you know Steve Harvey? Oh, uh, yeah, I do. Uh, I'd like to offer a suggestion uh, to Sister Beasley. Uh, mm. You, you want to have a title that can fit on the cover of the book. <laughs> uh, the title should not be good reading. The good reading should be on the inside <laughs> of the book. That's just a suggestion of mine. I'm exhausted <laughs> from the title. No the one title cares. Title. We were, it was no. exciting when you said the woman on the porch, but then when you mentioned the fact that she was down the street. <laughs> yeah. uh, from the liquor store. From the liquor store across uh -huh. the street. Next to the church parking lot. Mm -hmm. but nobody gives a damn at that point what this <laughs> book is about. <laughs> no, it's too much. It's too much. Yeah, that's too much. There's a lot going on. on this and night. plus, see, now, but I, that's like a road map to your house. You ain't going to get no peace. Everybody know where you is now. <laughs> Why they know, Pastor? Why they know? Yeah, everybody, all you got to do is backtrack it. All you got to do is get down to this parking lot, then step over there to that liquor store that's right next to the church that's down the street, and then uh, the hell her ass will be sitting right there on the porch. <clears throat> mm -hmm. wow. Go here, Deacon. All right, uh, Sister Renee Dixon is throwing a lie detector party. Now, she invited all the men, but they have all rejected uh, the invitation. She wants you to make all of them uh, attend the party. Your call, Pastor. We're not, we're not going to do that, Sister Dickerson, and you understand why. Um, what is the lie detector party for? You know we're lying. <laughs> I know we're lying. <laughs> They all know they lie. <laughs> you that's a fool. The truth. And that's, that's, the truth. that's the only truth that's going to be at the party. Uh, now, you got to hear this right here, Pastor. It's a mess that jumped off. Now, I want mm -hmm. you to listen to it now. Mr. Belinda Yates, you, as you know, who's always gossiping, said that she saw Brother Craig Collins' car, his mm -hmm. truck, outside a bar all night Friday. Now, she didn't call every member and told him that his truck was outside the club all night. He's a drinker, a woman chaser, and need to be put out the church. Brother Collins didn't say nothing. You know Sister Collins only lives, she only lives, uh, 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 Sister, what's that? She only lives uh, four houses down from the church. So let me tell you what Brother Collins did. Saturday night, he parked his truck outside her house and left it there. And Sunday morning, everybody saw his truck sitting out there on their way to church. She what? is livid, Pastor. She mm -hmm. is livid. Yeah. She got her. I thought that was a gangster move on Brother Kylie's part. <laughs> what? Since she want to start a rumor, the best thing is to be in the rumor. No uh, got her. So that's how you, you heard the saying, uh, 
what is the one that's most appropriate for this situation? Closed mouths don't get fed. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That probably has nothing to do with this, but I wanted to say it anyway. <laughs> so I said it. I've always wanted to preach that as a oh, sermon. Yeah. Closed mouths don't get fed. Mm-hmm. And uh, amen, But an open mouth going to have to eat a lot of sugar honey iced tea. <laughs> I don't think I found it. <laughs> Let the me- that's the message for Sister B. Amen. A closed mouth don't get fed, but an open oh mouth going to have to eat a whole lot of sugar honey iced tea. And Come on here, boy. Let it flow. Yeah. Hey, glow red. Coming up next, oh, ask the CLO, yeah. Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey yes. in the building for your love questions right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, legendary comedian and actor Earthquake. Quake. We are very special guests to talk about his brand new special on Netflix. But right now, it is time for Ask the CLO, Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey is ready for you. Manny in Summerlin says, I am a 39-year-old divorced man, and I've got a crush on a friend. I sent her roses from a secret admirer, and she called me excited about the flowers, saying she'd hoped they were from a guy at the gym and uh, that she's been flirting with. Should I tell her they're from me or let it go because she's not interested? Mm. Hey, dog. I done told y'all about these friendships, but here we go again. So what did you send it as a secret admirer for? Now you got your face cracked. She hope it's this dude down at the gym. It ain't. It's you. Why don't you just go on and tell her? You're 39. Tell her. You know what? And I tell you a slick way to do it. Send another set of flowers to her and say, I heard of your enthusiasm for who you had hoped these were for. But it was actually me. Don't uh, don't say nothing else. Uh, uh. I have learned about your enthusiasm of who you had hoped the previous bouquet of flowers were from, mm-hmm. but they were from me. Mm. And then see if she come up to you. Then see, Pill. Okay, all right. Keep okay. it gangster, dog. All right, man. Yes, Moving yeah. on to wow, this is an interesting name, Superior. Superior. That's the street I grew up on. Superior. So she better have, whoever this is, better have that thing together. Because I grew up off 112 <laughs> Superior. Have it together. Let's go, Shirley. Her name is Superior in Memphis. She says, uh, I'm 30 and I moved back to my hometown for a really great job. I have been hanging with my old friends and the places we go are the same places my father goes. He's single and loves to hang out. So it makes it very awkward. He loves to let everyone know he's the cool young dad. How do I address this? Uh, first of all, you've made a mistake. What? How so? You got out of Memphis. Mm-hmm. God blessed you, sent you back to Memphis for a great job with a great promotion. You then went right back to your same old place, your same old ways, and your same old friends. Mm. But you want to see something different. You're not. It's the same. You don't got to address your daddy. You got to address yourself. Mm. The group you stay in with is frozen in time. You got to move on so you can be what God made you to be. You sit a bit trying to fit back in with something he clearly got you out of. Okay. The problem ain't your daddy at the club. The club. The problem is why y'all at the club. Same damn club, better job. All right, all right, superior. You can't go up and backwards at the same time. Hard mm. to do. Try it. Watch. <laughs> Great advice. All right, here we go. Jillian in Hawaii writes, My husband and I are celebrating 40 years of marriage, and we asked my son and his wife to come join us for a weekend. My son's wife doesn't like to fly, so he said it wouldn't be right to leave her. Who is more important, his wife or his parents? Mm. His wife. Mm. <laughs> Hate to tell it to you. Yeah, yeah his wife. <laughs> yeah. His wife. Okay. Yeah. 
Any more questions? Well, I think she's clear. <laughs> you didn't stung her with it, though. She wasn't yeah. ready for that. You didn't stung her. Mm-hmm. His wife. Yeah. Yeah. Says that in the Bible, right? Yep. Leave all others and cleave only unto her. Leave. That's sorry, mama. Leave and cleave. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, Julian. See, the reason you and your husband are made 42 years is because y'all seem to understand that. Now, you want your husband, to, you want your son to not understand that. Mm-hmm. So you don't care if he make 42. Sounds like she doesn't really care for the wife that much. Yeah. Why don't y'all fly over there to celebrate your 42? You need to get out. <laughs> y'all live in probably live in old boy and ask her why y'all that water ways and palm trees. <laughs> all, that and all that All that dry ass paradise. Come on over here to St. Louis or something. Come on over to Cleveland. Come on, visit. <laughs> yeah, get away. Man. Yeah. All right, uh, moving on to Nina in Manhattan. Nina says, I'm a high school teacher and girls basketball coach, and I'm dating a PE teacher at my school. We got along fine, but we haven't had sex yet because of the way he smells. He wears cheap cologne over his natural body odor and dirty clothes. We've been trying to hook up for a while, but this is a major issue for me. Do I offer to wash his clothes and buy him some cologne? What? Excuse me. What does she say the man does? He's a PE teacher. That's what you smell school. like. You smell like tea. Uh, sm- smell like I he, you, Have you been in the boys' locker room at a school? Because <laughs> that's where he at all day. And then he in that gym with them boys yeah. all day. How you think this man supposed to smell? Just go in the boys' gym. That's where he at all day. The man... That shower where at the school? Somewhere. He going to prison. Shirley, if that man take his clothes off at that damn school and <laughs> get in that shower prison. ass he naked, his ass is going to prison. <laughs> they got they cameras. Coach <laughs> can't take his clothes off at school, <laughs> Shirley. I'm just telling you that right now. Shower at home. Shower somewhere. Now, I don't know what school you think this is, but it's public school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The man mm. smell like his occupation. Mm. What you need to do is go out on a date with him and see what he's like away from the P.E. job. The bro might be fine. He might be fine. We got to get right him some now, new cologne. Right now, he smells like that locker room. Got to well, he, get him some new cologne. Well, the cologne is okay, but, yeah. you know. He didn't have a lot of teacher, him. man. He ain't got a lot of money. Yeah. Probably came by Tom Ford cologne and all this. He got by was down there at the grocery store. What they sell at the grocery store? What colognes is oh, that? Oh, Pierre, uh, Pierre Cardin. Woo! Uh, that was one of my favorites. Uh, uh, <laughs> Boy, do they do they have polo down now? Po- polo down there. <laughs> Woo! Lag Rafael. Boy, do they have juke, any? Juke, uh, juke down there still? Fine height. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. I got two for you. Come on. Drakar. Woo! <laughs> down there. What? Hold up, Check. man. Check. Halston. <laughs> Whoa. That was that was Boy, sick. <laughs> take me back. <laughs> uh, uh, I know great I know great flannel down there. I take know Take me yeah. back, dear Lord. <laughs> to <laughs> a place cool where I received you. Oh. <laughs> All right, well thank take you, CLO. Joop. <laughs> Joop down there. <laughs> Coming up at the top of the hour. I better not find no brute. I know that. <laughs> Down Back there. with Jay with the chain on the bottle. <laughs> the one and only earthquake right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hey, y'all. Uh, hey, listen up. As promised, a family member's on the phone. This brother right here is, simply put, is just One of the greats, period, at this thing that's a very specialized skill set called stand-up. I know who they are. There may be some up-and-comers that I'm not aware of or familiar with because I'm not not out there touring. But if you are of the status of greatness as a stand-up, there is no way I don't know you. 
It's no way I ain't work with you. The brother that I'm introducing is greatness. He has a comedy special coming out on Netflix as a part of this all new Chappelle's Home Team series. And the first special premieres today on Netflix and it is from our special guest this morning. Come on, boy. Long overdue. Uh huh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well deserved, earned, and I don't know. Well, I do know, and I'll explain that reason why it's gotten to this point. But, ladies and gentlemen, he's here today. And I bet you, whatever Dave Chappelle is doing, this here one right here, it's going to be the funniest one of them all. I got all my cash bet on his ass. I can tell you that <laughs> yeah. right now. I done seen it my damn self. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the legendary, the one and only Earthquake. Quake. 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 Hey, can't that boy do an intro? I, yeah, he can. Boy, I was like, Lord. I'll see what that dude. I'll see what that Hey, and that's the name of the special, too. Earthquake Legendary. Quake, first yep. of all, man, congratulations, Period. man. Yes, yes sir. Yes. Thank you, doing? Steve. It's, uh, you know, like you said, it's a 30-year overnight sensation. You know what I mean? Overnight <laughs> success. It's, yeah. it's great, man. It's feeling good. I've, I've done more mainstream press this last four days than I've done my whole 30-year career. That's it's, right. It's, it's remarkable. It's, it's everything. I found, I, mean, I was on TMZ for the right reason. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no Kanye miss, huh? No, hey, I wasn't no Kanye or nothing, man. It was, it was <laughs> Hey, Quake, because you know what it is? And this is what I want to say to people. The reason, and Quake said it just now, He's done more mainstream press than he's ever done in his entire career. The reason it has taken 30-some years to see this brother finally get a special, it is because, and I'm going to tell you all facts now, it is because the powers that be on HBO, Showtime, those powers that be, they did not, the white people who make the decisions, who green lights these specials, did not get Earthquake. They didn't get him. He was too black. He was too urban. What's he talking about? Have you all oh. seen his ticket sales? Have oh. you all seen the reaction that the audience has? What you all say? Don't nobody know that? <laughs> what you going on over there? <laughs> Man, white people would hear that and go, what is he doing? It's called killing. He's killing, <laughs> and he's ripping the room. But Dave Chappelle knew, and he used his contact with Netflix and his power. And this is the first one that's coming out tonight, because this dude right here, Earthquake, got it just like all of us been getting it for years. Congratulations, Earthquake. Yeah, Quake. Yes, Wait, thank you. Deserve, you deserve, baby. Bro. Well, thank you, brother. And it was a blessing, man. Thanks to Dave, to the team, my team, Netflix. Yeah, they took care of me, too. I didn't have no Monique problem. You know, thank God. It was great. It was, and I was over there leaving. Thank you. Appreciate you, sir. I'll be hope to come back here again. Look at that check and like, woo, look at Jesus. I was like, Lord, have mercy. He said he got the check. <laughs> I said, look at Jesus. I said, look at God, boy. Okay, yeah. no, ain't nothing like that check you ain't expect, Steve. You know that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's one you didn't count on. You're what? like, Lord, 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 Lord. Yeah. Church was, church was closed, so I ain't even get my tithe. So, you know, I, I got to get those together. <laughs> I said I wanted to go, but it was, they was practicing COVID, so I stayed six feet away from the church. So, I'm going to give them their part. But uh, other than that, it's been good. <laughs> it's been great, man. I love him. I love him. Hey, man. <laughs> you know, you talk about so much stuff over the years, man. What what can people expect from this this version of Quake? 
Man, listen, man, I give you the utmost respect, the props, because you helped me early in my career. And I gave them what you taught me, man, 100% ignorant, but nothing but number ones. All these are number ones I put on the scene. Nothing but ones. None but ones. All one, none but ones, bro. I ain't leave. I, I shot none but ones on them. <laughs> and um, 100% ignorant. And um, I think this is the first special that actually captured who Quake is and what everybody else has been knowing and seeing over the 30 years of my career. I mean, it, it was. And uh, I finally watched it this Wednesday when we did the uh, screening. Uh, Kevin Hart, special shout out to Kev, man, hosted the uh, screening premiere for me. I told him, he said, who you want there, champ? I said, anybody that can move a needle. <laughs> Rob, Rob, pat you on the back. I need somebody to help me get some money so I don't have no unsung episode. That's all I <laughs> I just, hey, Quake. Hey, Quake, hang on, man. We'll be right back. Hey, y'all, don't go nowhere. We got family member Earthquake. More of him right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, y'all, uh, we're back, and <laughs> we're back with this fool, the ignorant one, Earthquake, who's uh, special on Netflix. It starts tonight. Uh, it's called Earthquake Legendary, and it's going to be all ones. In case you don't know what all ones is, tell everybody what all ones is, Earthquake. I learned this from Steve. You have a rating of jokes. You know, fours is when they, it's fillers. Three, they work sometimes. Two, they kind of slam, but one, that mm. means you could tell them at a funeral and they got to laugh. Yeah. It is a, <laughs> this one works anywhere that you work. And um, Steve taught me that. He's like, get them all together, move you around, and then when you're ready to cut a special, when you're ready to headline, line up all your ones. See, if you line up all your ones, and then I do rapid five. I put them all in ones and don't put no slack on it. Then mm. there it is. Then you can go what behind anybody. Nick. I tell people all the time, don't tell me how many followers you have. Tell me how many comedians can you follow. Mm, That's no, what man. allows you what? to know no, where man. you are in that game you are. I don't need to what? know how many people you follow. I mm. want to know how many comedians can you follow. Can you follow five dogs after the show started late? Because, you know, it's a black show. Ah, lady, you put their uncle on and... <laughs> it's a beauty. They have a beauty contest. Then they have a fashion <laughs> show. Then they selling show. chicken. Yeah. Then the pastor talking, and then they say, "Here you go. You got. You got to have ones for those. You got to have great ones for them." I'm gonna tell you something about Earthquake. Earthquake is from that era where he had to follow. Everybody in front of him was great. Quake, I don't know if you remember this night in Dallas, Texas, at the outdoor uh, amphitheater by Coca-Cola. It was Joe Torrey, J. Anthony Brown, beast, beast. Steve Harvey, yes, sir. Bernie Mac, <gasps> Bill Bellamy, and Earthquake. Damn. That was the lineup. So what Quake is saying is, man, you had to be able to follow. Everybody out there kill it. So when you hear them two famous words, the most fearful words in show business, when you hear them, you got to be ready. You next. And Earthquake, I didn't care where you slotted him. He was always ready to be next. He come from that era of some bad boys. I'm so proud of you, man. I can't even tell you. I, I, I feel like I'm getting a special. I do. Well, you are. Is that what it is? You I are. do. He's a, he's a comedian's comedian, baby. Hey, Quake, sit right there, man. We're going to keep Quake on because this is our boy. Tonight, yeah. everybody, it starts on Netflix. It's called Earthquake Legendary. Oh, Lord. Make sure you get it. <laughs> yeah. Watch it over and over and over. We'll be back with more Earthquake right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, everybody, we're back. And on the phone, uh, we got us this morning because his Netflix uh, series starts this evening. And the special on Netflix is called Earthquake Legendary. So, Quake, let me ask you a couple of questions, man, uh, about what's going on in the world today. Friday, you know, President Biden uh, nominated uh, a federal appellate judge, uh, K- K- yeah. Katanji Brown Jackson, mm-hmm. okay. to become the first black woman to serve on the U.S. Supreme Court. 
And we really kind of hopeful that the Senate going to confirm her as soon as possible. You got any thoughts on this at all? No. Well, first of all, any sister got three names is qualified. <laughs> Second of all, um, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's first of all. Second of all, when I found out she used to be a public um, defender, it's about time somebody at the highest court understands the judicial system at its lowest level. I think to sit there, you know, I heard she did pro bono work and had a, a, a major law firm represent one of her family members pro bono to help him with a life sentence on a non-violent charge. You need those type of people in that room to give the perspective for all people for the longest. They just had people from one perspective of the law. You need some people who going through, preferably people such as ourselves. I tell people all the time, we as black people, we don't have no problem with the law. We have a problem with the enforcement of the law. Certain people do not pay the same price that other people do, and preferably my Caucasian brothers and sisters. So, I, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I believe anything when it comes to a black woman, you know what I mean? Because they are the reason why we're where we at. We have men, our men, have been riding the coattails and the back of black women, our women, for centuries. So I, I'm, I'm proud of it. I hope she get confirmed. But you know how it is. Lindsey Graham and the rest of them and Cruz talking about it's discriminatory. How is discriminatory? Can we get one chip on the cookie? Because I don't even look at that other brother on the outside. So can we get one yeah. chip oh, on the cookie? Oh, that's a different kind of cookie, though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that cookie right there, yeah. boy. I swear. Yeah. I don't know what they did to him, but they caught him. You hear me? They caught him so <laughs> <laughs> Robbed him of all his humanity on that black side. Yeah. Give me all that. So, yeah, they got it. Yeah, man, it's like, it's it's so much happening out here that's going crazy, man, that's going to take a different perspective. Uh, right now, I have to watch what I say concerning this Russian-Ukraine conflict. I got to be careful with what I say. You know, you don't <laughs> because you don't. You know, you and Dave are very, well, you got to be careful. Hold on. Let me take that back because you got to be careful because your ass is on the neighborhood. Your ass. <laughs> now, you on too many TV shows. So, quick, yeah. listen to me, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's the quake I know right there. <laughs> Tonight, everybody, the first special premieres on Netflix from the Chappelle Home Team series. And I'm just going to flat out tell you right now, this going to be the best one. I don't even know who the other ones are. I'm pretty sure they're real good. I'm pretty sure they share greatness. But in my heart, Steve Harvey's heart, nephew Tommy's heart, yes, sir. Kia's heart, those of us that do it, and then women and the girls that have loved Quake for all these years, yes. we could not be happier Man. or more Man. proud of somebody getting a shot. And I'm going to tell you one other thing too, Quake. This is just the first one. Because after this one, they're going to give you another one. Watch what I tell you. I was a 22-year-old comedian. The only reason why I know what the improv looks like is because Quake was the first one to put me in the A-list room. I appreciate you for that, man. Well, Steve did it for me, and he always... Quake, listen, man. I love you, man. We love you. Keep yes, doing your do. thing, man. Congratulations, everybody in the Steve Harvey Nation. I already know you love him. Show up and show out on Netflix and keep getting it over and over and over. It's called Earthquake Legendary. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the legend that is Earthquake. Come on, yeah. baby. Love Thank you. you. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at four minutes after the hour, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, he won't let me lead. Mm. We'll get into that in just a bit. But right now, it is time for the prank call. I almost said calm falls, nephew. That's, that's, calm that's, falls. How my son used to, that's how my son used to say it. <laughs> time for the prank phone call with the nephew. What you got for us, nap? Calm falls. All right, all right. You know, we have some rough beginnings we do. Mm -hmm. We have yeah. rough beginnings sometimes. But there's nothing better than happy ending. 
happy ending. I know, I know. Some of y'all are frowning and and cringing a little bit, but that's all right. That's all right. Happy endings, cat dog, if you would. Hello, therapy and is Judy speaking. How may I help you? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to come in and, and get some uh, some therapy done. I was in an accident at my job. You know, I got injured like a week and a half ago. I ain't been able to go back to work for my back and my leg. They say, you know, I haven't broke any bones or nothing, but it's, you know, it's real sore, real stiff, and hard to get out of bed. So I wanted to see, you know, what it takes to... Uh, to get a therapist and get start getting some type of treatment. Okay, well, sir, what we typically do is we ask our patients to come in, you know, check out our facility, and so we can also assess you, um, you know, see where the damage is, the majority of it, and, you know, then get you to a therapist. So if you would like to come in, we can definitely do that for you. Okay, do you know what the therapists actually do when they're doing the treatment? Well, if you come in, sir, we can definitely direct you um to any of our three therapists that we have on site right now, uh-huh. uh, but each one specializes in a particular um, field, so it's more beneficial for you if you come in, and then we can assess you and then direct you to that particular therapist, okay? Okay, so you say, how many y'all do y'all have? We have three. There's Marty, Brenda, and Cecilia here. Okay, the person that uh, referred me to y'all told me that Cecilia was the one that, that had worked on. Is there a way I could talk to, to to Cecilia? Typically, we normally ask our patients to come in, but let me see if she's available right now. I know earlier she was with a patient, so let me just check really quick. I mean, if she is available, then I can I can transfer you, okay? Oh, okay, okay, I'll I just hold on. Okay, hold on. Hi, this is Cecilia. Uh, yeah, Miss Cecilia, uh, trying to come up there and get some therapy done. I hurt my back and my leg at work. I mean, they are, they already told me wasn't nothing broke or nothing, but I wanted to see what exactly do y'all do as far as physical therapy? You know, what, what exactly will I be doing? Well, when you come in, we'll do a consultation, and, um, you know, we'll massage you and take x-rays and put you in a whirlpool tub, and there are several different things that we can do for you. Okay. Is it, is it a certain timeline? I mean, like, how long would it take before I can get back to work? Because, you know, I've been off for about a week now, and I'm trying to get back within the next couple of weeks. But it, it, it's taking me, like, you know, at least 30 minutes to get out of bed because of my back and my leg. Oh, wow. Well, you need to come in as soon as possible because that sounds like that's pretty bad. Okay. Well, well, let me ask you this here. After people get through doing uh, the therapy, do, do y'all have uh, happy endings? Happy endings? What do you mean by happy endings? Ha- happy endings, like, you know, when therapy is over with, you know, do would you yourself, you know, would you do happy endings at the end? Okay, I'm, I'm still not understanding. What do you mean by happy endings? What are you talking about? Okay, say, like, if I come over there and go through a session or whatever for about an hour, when we get through, you know, will you kind of, like, you know, close the door and... and, and you know, make, you know, do happy endings, you know, make, make me feel good. Okay. Um, close the door. Uh, I'm still not quite understanding what you mean by happy ending, sir. Okay. What I'm trying to say is, like, when we get through with the procedure, uh, you know, make me feel good in a, in a, in a nice, uh, you know, sexual way, you know, happy endings. Uh, when Judy sent you, uh, back to me, what are we talking about with this happy ending thing? Because I don't, I don't. Well, I, didn't, I didn't ask her nothing about the happy ending. That, that right there is just going to be between me and you. Well, see, I don't, I don't play that. I don't, I don't care. This is a place of business. We're professional here. We do therapy for people who are seriously f-ing hurt. This is not the the nearest f-ing bar. What the f-ing are you talking about happy endings after we finish with that. Well, what the, what kind of place do you think this is? Well, I mean, I know it's I know it's therapy, but I mean, it, it, if people going through that much pain, at least have some type of happy endings, don't you think? Well, I think you might suggest your significant other. Okay, so you wouldn't be up for doing the happy ending part? Hell no, I ain't interested in that. M- what kind, man? What kind of b- this? You call about talking about you hurt? Hell, if you hurt, you shouldn't be even talking about happy ending you talking about okay hold on i mean you're not talking to me professionally well you coming at me with this happy ending ain't uh professional at all either what kind of place you think we running over here Uh, okay hold up i was referred to you i'm thinking you know the guy telling me you know you're gonna take care of me what guy told you like that i'm sorry what guy told you some like that you know what let's not even go into there because i don't even want to bring him into this can you 
satisfy me after Easter. I'm going to tip you a little bit, too. What? What? Man, have you lost your everlasting marble mind? Are you gone crazy? Judy, Judy, who in the hell is this on the phone that you done sent through me thinking this is the happy ending place? Wait, wait. Who is this? Mr. Cecilia, she don't, she don't she don't know nothing about the happy ending part. It don't matter. You 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 the receptionist. You know what? You on the borderline of losing your job because this is hello hello, Mr. Cecilia. Can I just tell you who 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 referred me? Who 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 in the told you that I have happy endings for anybody? Because the only person I have happy endings for is my husband. Okay. So who who was it? Mr. Cecilia. Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your girlfriend Karen got me to prank phone call you. <laughs> Y'all f- full of b- <laughs> Y'all in here getting me ready. I'm about to find my receptionist. B- <laughs> I got folks in the b- lobbies. <laughs> they just think I'd have lost my b- in my <laughs> Y'all gonna call me on my job with b- <laughs> I'm a kick <laughs> <laughs> This is oh. This just oh. don't make no sense. Mrs. Cecilia, she told me, she said, my girlfriend's patience is short. Very. <laughs> Very. <laughs> oh, it's on. She going to need her. Oh, that's all right. I got something for her. Oh, you got some happy endings for her. I, I got some happy endings for her. You just wait. I be. <laughs> hey, Cecilia, you got to tell me this, baby. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> Nephew. <laughs> 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 Ta-da. Play too much. You, you just proud. Well, I'm elated. What? <laughs> yes, I am. Mm-hmm. Stupidity is best, babe. That is, that's the nephew getting ready for uh, March 19th. March 19th is Beaumont, Texas, Julie Rogers Theater. The nephew is coming to town. Tickets on sale right now. You know what I said? You can get him at all Ticketmaster outlets, or you can go down there to the box office in Beaumont and tell him I want some tickets to see this fool. Nephew Tommy, coming ignorant, coming crazy, coming every way you can think, baby. I ain't, never, I ain't been there in 20 some years, so get your ticket. Stupid only comes around once every what? I guess every 20 years. Here I come. Every day. Every day. Well, it's every day right here. Now, you can get it every day right here. (laughs) But you want it in your face. In your face. You come get it. And the nephew will be there. Okay? That right there is Beaumont. Right after Beaumont, where we going? It's April Fool's, y'all. April Fool's weekend. We are headed to Nashville, Tennessee. Okay? That's right. Nashville, Tennessee. The nephew coming to town. That's Zany's Comedy Club, April Fool's Weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And uh, what better way to spend April Fool's Weekend than with a fool? Everybody don't get a chance to do that. You get a fool on April Fool's Weekend. You can't beat that. So get your tickets. They on sale. Zany's. Nephew coming. Appreciate Baltimore. Did I do it? Yes, I did. Huntsville. Did I do it? Yes, I did. I'm on the road again. (laughs) <laughs> All right, nephew. <laughs> Thank you. Going Coming up next, strawberry letter. Uh, he won't let me lead. We'll get into that, see what that's all about right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for today's strawberry letter. And if you need advice on relationships, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your strawberry letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter because guess what? We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to do this one right here, right now. And you never know. It could be yours. It could be yours. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry Letter. Thank you, nephew. He won't let me lead before I get into this letter. Let me say if you have any young kids um, with you, You don't want them to hear this letter, okay? That's my disclaimer for this letter. Again, the subject is, he won't let me lead. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm a 40-something married female, and I know that my husband cheated on me for years, and I finally gave him an ultimatum at the end of January. We talked, and both said we didn't want to end our marriage, so we decided to do things a little differently so he wouldn't get bored in the bedroom. I met his girlfriend, and she was honest about their relationship. She said it was only for the sex, and she'd been asking to involve me in their sex capades. I was drawn to her sexy lips and cute little hips, so I initiated the first intimate act with her. It was just me and her, and we let my husband watch. 
After that night, things immediately got better for my husband and I in the bedroom. Two weeks later, we invited her over for the weekend while our children were with my parents. Since it was my first threesome, I wanted to control the positions and lead everything until I got comfortable watching him with another woman. We started off the weekend like we were at a resort. I got a charcuterie board and caviar, and we put three big steaks on the grill. We enjoyed our hot tub and pool together, and my husband massaged us both in the bedroom. But then things went sour when the intimacy started. He was focused on her and uh, he was focused on her and ignored my request. They were next to me whispering to each other intimately. And uh, when he got to me, the only whisper he gave me was to tell me I was ruining the night with all of my directions. I was stunned. When it was over, she decided to go home and my husband got upset with me. I've tried calling her to fix things, and she's not returning my calls. Have they shut me out? Is he really, really mad because I tried to lead or because he wants this other chick? I think all of the above. Yes, he definitely doesn't want you involved. I mean, I think that was pretty clear by the way he was acting. He just wants her for himself. Um, uh, Yeah, they've shut you out. And I got to ask you, why is this a surprise to you? Uh, when you said you knew he had cheated on you for years, um, I think by participating, all you did was give him permission to continue cheating and continue with these affairs. Only now he can do it in your face because you gave him permission, you joined in. And while some men would love this gift that you gave your husband, uh, you know, having threesomes and all of that, um, it, it just seems to irritate him that you were even there. and and But now both of them have a change of heart because the other woman who called you and said she wanted you to participate at first, it's like you're getting on her nerves too. Um, I think that's because your husband empowered her with all that whispering and everything and being mad at you. So I say put the ultimatum back on the table because you're done with his cheating and, and you're no longer going to go along with it, right? Uh that's not what you want. It's time for you to stand up for yourself and just let him know that. He doesn't respect you. you. That's clear. He doesn't respect you or the marriage. And that may or may not change if you let him know how you feel. But moving forward, at least you can respect yourself at this point, all right, and make some decisions involving you, you know, and what you want. Steve? I can't believe this ragged-ass letter. I know. It just oh, kept surprising me every time I read some mm-hmm. more. It kept su- now the biggest surprise for me is later in the letter. Mm-hmm. So I won't. I'm going. The shock of the whole letter for me is later on. Okay. But <laughs> I'm this the whole damn letter. You're 40 year old. You knew your husband has cheated on you for years. For years you've known this. I finally gave him an ultimatum at the end of January. We talked and we both said we didn't want our marriage to end. I mean, why would he? Right. I can be <laughs> married and you know I'm cheating and we still married? <laughs> what, what is this ice cream and cake too situation? What, why? So here we go. We decided to do things a little differently so he wouldn't get bored in the bedroom. Are you sure this was a we decision? <laughs> oh well, let's go. I um, here, here was here was that, that that was a shocker. Here was the next shocker. I met his girlfriend, and she was honest about their relationship. Right there. What? Right there. <laughs> what? And she lived. Who, who, who are you married to? Who is, mm-hmm. who is this guy married to? Who's writing this letter? Mm. Certainly, this is not from the people on this morning show. Carla Pharrell huh. is a, is a stone cold killer. I can't <laughs> oh, imagine oh her killer. <laughs> so, Carla Pharrell, no, no, stone cold killer. Allegedly, <laughs> window breaking, sugar gas tank, tire slitting, yeah. shot firing, <laughs> ass whooping, <laughs> dough breaking, window crashing. <laughs> Windshield breaking, and That's how we I, roll. Carla from back in the day, Carla broke an antenna off a dude's car one time. 
Just Allegedly, snappy. you have to You're not listening word. to the damn radio. <laughs> Cars used to have antennas on them. You're not listening to the radio snap. <laughs> when I come back, I'll tell you the rest of the shocking things that I discovered. All right. Thank you, Steve. Uh, we'll have part two of your response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Today's subject, he won't let me lead. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject, he won't let me lead. All hey. right, here we go. 40-year-old woman married to a man that she'd been knowing. She'd been, che- been cheating on her for years. Uh, they sat down and finally issued an ultimatum at the end of January. They both decided they didn't want their marriage to end, so they decided to change things up in the bedroom to stop some of the boredom. Um, then the lady out of nowhere said, I met his girlfriend, and she was honest about their relationship. She said it was only for sex, and she'd been asking to involve me in their sex capades. Now, this obviously was exciting to you. You say you was drawn to her sexy lips and cute little hips. So I initiated the first intimate act with her. And it was just me and her, and I let my husband watch. What? I'm say sorry. it. What? <laughs> that, don't, that don't look like fun to me. I don't. Uh, just sitting uh, here watching. What the hell going on? Uh, There's no way. So that's, that's number one reason I don't like strip clubs. It's all this watching. See, I don't, I don't oh, no. y'all, y'all, see, y'all don't see nothing about no Steve Harvey, no strip club. That ended in my life long, long time ago. Cause mm-hmm. even before I was famous, good. It's just what we we had watching. I don't like watching. But if I ain't, this ain't for me, uh-huh. for participation. Right. And you see, once you, you can't dance on me, then go dance on him. Cause now mm-hmm. I'm gonna dislike your ass. <laughs> the whole strip club doesn't work for me. See, that's so anyway, that's a long story right here. Here we go. After that night, things immediately got better for me and my husband in the bedroom. Two weeks later, we invited her over for the weekend while her children were with my parents. Now, here's a key. Since this was my first threesome, I wanted to control the positions. Ah. Hmm. See, now we go back to the title of the letter. Oh, knew he is. won't let me lead. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you why in a second. I wanted to control the positions and lead everything until I got comfortable watching him with another woman. We started off the weekend like we were at a resort. Now, here is the most shocking line in the whole damn letter for me. I got a chuchutery. What the hell is that? Oh, that's the know. most amazing thing I in the world. Know. Yeah, it's good. It's a I tray know. of, you know, cold cuts and it's cheese and all cheese, that. I got cuts, a charcuterie mm. board and charcuterie. caviar. Delicious. And put three <laughs> big steaks on the grill. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This They're is the good. most shocking line. That, what are we talking about this for? <laughs> it's a, this is about a threesome. Nobody give a damn what you eat. Nobody <laughs> give a damn really? about snack tray. Put you in the they mood. got these charcuterie boards at Kroger. <laughs> you can go down there and buy one of them. Got a little cold cuts on it, a little salami. Don't nobody just eat salami by its damn self unless it's on the pizza. You done cut it all up next to some damn <laughs> some cheese cut up next to it. What is we we finna have a threesome? Body give a damn what you got on this snack tray. <laughs> <trail? laughs> this was the and then put put three big steaks on the grill. Now, here we go. Now, back to the letter. We enjoyed our hot tub and pool together. My husband massaged us both in the bedroom, but things got a little sour when the intimacy started. He was focused on her and ignored my request. They were next to me, whispering to each other intimately, and when he finally got to me, the only whisper he gave me to tell me, you're ruining the night. You're blowing it with all these damn instructions. Shut your damn mouth. You're talking too much. That ain't what this is, baby. All these instructions, do this, sit over here, touch this right here, stand up, get up right here, crawl over here. Now crawl back over there, swim, act like you're swimming. Now lay down on your back, backstroke, <laughs> no, put your toes up on your ears. Put your toe on your ear. I can't put my toe on my damn ear. Hold it right here. Put your knee up against your, put your knee on your breast. I can't put my knee up on my, these damn instructions. We get it. <laughs> I was stunned when it was over. She decided to go home, and my husband got up upset with me. I tried calling her to fix things, and she's not returning my calls. Have they shut me out? 
is he really mad because I tried to lead or because he wants the other chick? What the hell? How stupid are you, lady? Lady, first of all, let me give you some facts. The reason they don't want you to lead is because you can't drive. You're new to this. It's your first yeah. threesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You passing out instructions that's not in the threesome law book. Talk. Oh. That's a law And book. you ain't never been in the threesome, so you don't know. You passing out instructions. Now, here's what you don't know. The reason they know you was breaking the rules is because they done done a threesome before. Mm. Yeah. Why would this Uh-oh. lady want to introduce you into their sex capades? He said, no, I don't think she going to go for it right now. So she done brought another chick in there. They done done it before. Now, you just in there talking. All this damn talking. It ain't your turn. What is you talking for? <laughs> You're supposed to be watching and encouraging. Uh-uh, don't do that. That's too far back. Don't push her leg way over there. What is you doing? I got this. <laughs> you can't drive. They've had threesomes before. Yes, he wants the other chick back because they know how to do threesomes and everything else. Hit us up on Instagram and Steve Harvey (laughs) FM to comment on today's Strawberry Letter. You can also check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Coming up next, it is Junior. Junior is back with Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Junior is back. It is time for Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? All right, Shirley, but first, let me just tell you, April Fool's Comedy Jam, and you heard of earlier today, me, Earthquake, Bill Bellamy, Bruce Bruce, going to be live in Dallas at the Texas Trust Theater. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com. April Fool's, the April 1st. That's where we're going to be at. But right now in Sports Talk, Shirley, I'm just tell you right now, mm-hmm. uh, Tommy, I'm just say, uh, over the weekend, James Harden debuted over in Philly. Uh, he mm-hmm. had a great showing. He had 27 points, 12 assists, and, um, you know, uh, congratulations, James. I'm always going to be a hater at this point because you left the Rockets. Uh, Who, everybody left the Rockets. Yeah, yeah, I know. Everybody leave the Rockets. What is your ring? Yeah, I'm, I'm hating on go. James. Yeah, P.J. Tucker got a ring. Yeah, everybody yeah, leave us and go get a ring. Kyle Lowry left us and got a ring. That's my point. So, James, congratulations. You made it to Philly. Uh, um, did you know this though? Did you know the Cleveland Cavaliers is number four in the East? Four. Yeah. Four. Yeah. Well, the Rockets is dead last in the West. You don't get on is. the Wheaty box at four. Man, Nobody what? mentions fourth place. Yeah, if you fourth. fourth at the Olympics, guess what? Your ass ain't on the medal stage. You ain't even get a damn bronze. <laughs> so I don't want to hear about no saying. damn fourth. I'm just I'm saying. I'm just everybody. saying. You, you, you fourth at East. You, you in the playoffs. The Rockets, on the other hand, is dead last. You know what? I'm tired of people leaving us in Houston and going elsewhere to make magic happen. I was mad when the Oilers left. I was nah, mad. I'm then. with you on that one. Yeah, yeah, I'm mad. Everybody leave us and do better. Oilers, when I was rooting for them, never went to a Super Bowl. Soon as they turned themselves no. to the Tennessee Titans, they go to the Super do Bowl. Do you know why? Why, huh? Mm-hmm. Because Look Houston, at- one of my favorite cities, is a transient city. Very few people are born in Houston. Houston was born after the 70s. You know what? That was that big rush. Everybody went out there. Ain't nobody loyal to Houston. Uh, All I'm What is you famous for? I'm loyal to Houston. What what is you famous for? I'm mad when Warren Moon left. I'm mad at Warren. If I see Warren Moon, I'm pushing down. (laughs) He He left Houston. Yeah, but he left us. I'm mad everybody leave Houston. That's just the problem be mad, I have. Be mad at the owners, Junior. Don't be mad at the players. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. I don't know the owners. I know the players. That's why I'm mad. All y'all. You mad I got at the wrong people. All y'all done left Houston before. Tell you the truth. Mm. Mm. Everybody on this show. Oh, okay. Done okay. left okay. Houston. Okay, you're going to bring that. Excuse me. Temporarily. Uh, that ain't got Snap, nothing to do. Crack or pop. Just, y'all went ain't... to where the money was. Snap. Oh. Crack a pop. Oh, that's what you're going to do? you going to bring that up? Uh, Ain't oh, y'all wow. from Houston? Wow. Wow. I don't right, play sports. Go. Thank you, Junior. Where you Coming live up. now, Junior? Mm. 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 Since you <laughs> so brought it up, Mr. Sports Director. Let's, Let's get yeah. out of here. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning mm. Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
The 53rd annual NAACP Image Awards aired Saturday night, and the theme of this year was a celebration of our stories and excellence in entertainment. Actor and comedian Anthony Anderson hosted the show again this year. Looking good, Anthony. I love that black tux. I love that. was my favorite. He was fly. Yes. He changed a couple of times, though, Shirley. He was real fly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he had his mama with him. Yes, yes. Miss Doris is always there. <laughs> I loved her at the end. Yes. I loved Mary J. Blige performed. Did yes. you see that? Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Good morning, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And uh, Love No Limit, she performed. Yes, she looked My beautiful gee. as well. Mm -hmm. Jennifer Hudson won Entertainer of the Year. Yeah. And did okay. you see this? Morgan Freeman presented her. Yes, oh, Shirley. Yes, 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 We know you paused your TV. You did I yes. did. I, I ran that over and over again. Live Junior. TV I did. Junior. She paused. <laughs> yeah, she paused it. <laughs> Jennifer Hudson won Entertainer of the Year and Outstanding Actress in a Motion Picture for her role as Aretha Franklin in the movie Respect. She did an outstanding job in that movie. Uh, a mm -hmm. few more of the big winners were Kevin Hart. We loved him in True Story yes. uh, with Wesley Snipes. Yes, Kevin oh, won yeah. for Outstanding Actor in a TV Movie, Limited Series, or Dramatic Special. He Congratulations, Kevin. So yeah. deserving. Yes. Yeah. Taraji P. Henson won for Outstanding Actress in a TV Movie, Limited Series, or Dramatic Special for Annie. Congratulations to Taraji. She's so good. Regina King, our girl Regina King, won for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a motion picture for The Harder They Fall. We love that beast. movie. One of my, and favorite. Love Rudy. King. One of yes. my favorite movies. If y'all have not seen Harder They Fall on Netflix, you miss it. One of the great gangster yeah. ass Steve movies. says to check it out because yeah. you know The how most he is. amazing Oof. thing is Uncle Steve saw it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That is amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. It's so and know it. So good. Speaking of a heart of the heart of they fall, the heart of they fall one for outstanding motion picture of the year. So congratulations like to all yes. the cast, all the producers, everything. Anthony Anderson won for outstanding actor in a comedy series for Blackish, of course. <laughs> yes, yes <Dre>. he did. <laughs> Dre. Yes, and uh, Will Smith. Congratulations going out to Will Smith for outstanding actor in a motion picture. For King Richard, the story of Richard Williams, the father of Venus and Serena Williams, the greatest nice. tennis players on earth. Yes. Yeah. Nice. So it was a, it was a good night had by all. Prince Harry and, uh, and Meghan Markle were there. They sure were there. Yeah. They yeah. were. Yeah. The Dutch and Duchess of mm -hmm. Sussex. Yeah. Because you know they don't live in the castle no more. You know that. they don't live. <laughs> they're done. No, they live in America, so no. They yeah. live in America. <laughs> they live in LA, yeah. and they're doing they great work, work here. They really are. They're I wouldn't have moved out that castle. I don't give a damn. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all can <laughs> talk about me all you want. I'm gonna hire some security and ride around London whipping people ass. Say something about me or this <laughs> baby. <laughs> One more damn thing. One more word about me or this baby. That's your ass. That's what I do. What I'm not race. doing is moving out this damn castle. I'm not doing that. <laughs> all these damn service in here, gardens around here, and all this. Here. Yeah. Go you to a couple of meetings out. and stuff. Oh, hell they no. They wanted to be independent. <laughs> they can't talk about you enough to move. Go <laughs> riding in them cars, all them carriages and stuff. All them big dudes, them fur hats on, watching me. Oh, hell no. I'm not leaving this world. Over Your here majesty. to do what? <laughs> Sitting over here talking on Oprah, crying and stuff. I'm not finna do that. <laughs> you ain't doing nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sit up on Good Morning CBS trying to talk to Gail King about my life. Oh. You, you I'm over there. here. It's rough, but we're going to get through it. <laughs> <laughs> they going to get over it. <laughs> Pray for us. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Harvey, is there any truth that security has been? Yes, that's very true. <laughs> We've noticed a, a rise in attacks on journalists. That's yes, <laughs> but I'm really? in this. I'm in you this here, this castle, and y'all can't come in here. So what is y'all talking to me about it for? <laughs> Ain't so nobody living in this castle ever been arrested. Congratulations! Yes. Did you slap? Yes. <laughs> what is going on? We're out. More of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up in 20 minutes. Can't after right my after tea, this. Please. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have offered a new strategy to help communities across the country live with the coronavirus and get back to some version of of normal, normal life, okay? The CDC now suggests that 70% of Americans, 70% of Americans can stop wearing masks and they don't need to social distance or avoid crowded spaces. The additional 28% of Americans who live in areas that still have high COVID-19 levels are still advised to wear your mask indoors. Okay? Does anybody know what areas those are? <laughs> well, who, not where who we 70? live. Who is the 70? 70% of them. Everywhere. I, I hardly see I got masks. Be my luck, I run up into the 28%. Yeah, yeah. I, I hardly see people wearing masks now when you go out. I have mine on. Oh, but. no, no. I'm not saying I enjoy the mask because I don't, but I they're do very either. helpful for me when I do go out in public. Because yeah. mm. if I put on a hat or a hoodie, some glasses, and that mask, I can actually walk around. You're oh, so it's a disguise yeah, for you. Yeah. Oh, man, it's uh, like a like heaven yeah. sudden. Then every now and then, people are going to, Steve, what's up? Yeah. I go, damn, bro, I got on a mask. Oh, man, I know your walk. <laughs> <Where am I? laughs> yes. Yes. Hit a one that got me. I went to the golf store a couple weeks ago. Hey, Steve, what's up? Damn, bro, I got on a mask. You know, I, you, you, he said, what you drive? <laughs> you put a mask on that? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 33 minutes after. We'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather live with 10 small dogs, or would you rather live with 10 toddlers? Mm. Uh, <laughs> give me the dogs. Why? Yeah, them, uh, yeah, them dogs. Yeah. yeah, I'm not changing uh, that many pampers. I'm not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> if dogs. five of them go at the same time, I ain't got time for that. that that's the thing. One big <laughs> pail, let me put this food in there. I can walk away. Yeah, let me, let me do that. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, Mm-mm. we have not heard from you. Uh, I'm not staying with no 10 toddlers. <laughs> you got seven much. kids already. <laughs> no, I can't chase after them many toddlers. people. All these steps in this damn house. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, hell no. <laughs> Stop. Get out. Put that back. What you doing? <laughs> Sit over there. Don't touch that. What you, what you crying for? Stop hitting him. Get over here. No, we ain't got no more. Stop eating that. Don't eat. Put that out your mouth. Put your hand in that socket if you want to. No, I'm good. Quit crawling over there. What is you picking up off the floor for? Lay down. Get out the floor. Lay down. The, don't climb on that no more. Uh-uh. <laughs> You no. exhausted first yeah. hour. Yeah. Dog, I'm done. <laughs> and you'll say all that in 15 minutes. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> Wait a minute. No. No. <laughs> all right. All right, let's go. Would you rather wear no socks for six months or no underwear for six months? <laughs> socks uh, need it. I'm wearing Ooh. shoes, though, right? Yeah, yeah, well, I got the Am I walking on the, the ground? You going? I mean, what if... <laughs> what no, I just no saw socks. It's simple. No socks or no See, underwear. in my job, in my job, it'd be hard, no socks. Because, man, I've got to stand no up too rough, much. Though. But I got to. I'm going to have to go with the no socks. I'm going to have to. I got I'm to have them drawers on. But I'm going to have to buy that old-fashioned ass foot powder, that cake up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they come in the, uh, the yellow, the yeah, yellow, so the I yellow can thing. feel like I got a sock on in there. But if I try to do my job in front of all these people with no drawers on, Mm-mm. I can tell you right now it's gonna be a full blown situation. I'm on the internet every day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ready to feud. love is over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cause it'll look like you always ready. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it'll look like you are always feuding. Ah. I'm talking about man. He be cutting on the well. Well, let's cut on Family Feud. See what side he on today. <laughs> See what side he on. Yeah. No, you didn't, Steve. Uh, Sorry. Cause you know, got them families over there. You never oh, know God. what's gonna be. That's why. You know, I know how to tell yeah. my jokes yeah. and stay yeah. keep working. Yeah, uh-huh. cover that. Cover, cover that. Yeah. All right, uh, coming up. Geez, thank you for oh, that. Oh, I guess he didn't like that answer. <laughs> Coming up next is our last break of the day. Stomping and laughing. 
<laughs> 49 <laughs> minutes, we'll have some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. Hurry up, he about to turn the corner. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we are, last break of the day on this Monday. Before we get out of here, uh, we got to say thanks to the legendary Earthquake. Earthquake, yes, our special guest today. His Netflix special airs tonight on Netflix, of course, produced, presented by Dave Chappelle. And, I mean, finally, an overnight sensation, he said, after 30 years, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> 30 years in the game. So never give up on your dreams. Never. No. Quake is living proof it's of It's possible, that. baby. Mm-hmm. Love you, Quake. We'll be yep. watching. My yep. man. Congratulations, watching. Quake. Yeah. Yeah, good brother, right, man. Steve. Well deserved. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was thinking about everything that's going on in the world. You know, I mean, it's just so much going on, and there's so much, so many things happening that the new news causes you to pause on the old news. And I've discovered something. It's an amazing trick they use. It's almost like a diversion. And they use news stories to create a diversion. So now everybody, the latest thing is the Russians attacking the Ukraine. A minute ago, I thought it was the rioters storming the Capitol building But then I thought it was about us with voting rights acts, but then they did what they usually do with us. They rescinded the Voting Rights Act again. Um, And it just goes on and on and on. And you forget that people are fighting for some basics like food, like education. You forget that we have a drug epidemic in this country that we still have not addressed, that the United States has more drug addicts in it than anywhere else in the world. The United States purchases more drugs than anybody else in the world. The United States leads the world in prescription drug sales. America leads the world in incarceration, and we all know who that is. So as we look at all these new stories that come out that divert our attention, which is almost how we almost never get anything solved around here because every time we get close to passing a law, voting on something that's important to us, something else happens around the world or to us. And the attention goes there. And then the enthusiasm and the rush dies down and things go on and on and on, and the beat goes on and on and on, just like it always has, like it always did before. You know the thing that keeps me centered in all of this? What keeps me in the center of the hurricane? I reside in the eye of the hurricane, where there's very little wind, There's peace, there's tranquility, and I'm not caught up in the swirl that is the tornado. See, when the tornado comes through, I should say the eye of the tornado. I sit in the eye of the tornado because the world that's swirling around me, everything, I get to sit in the eye and watch it for the most part. Well, Steve, how you do that? Because I got a relationship with my Heavenly Father who gives me peace an abiding peace, not fun, I said peace. See, a lot of people confuse that. What is peace? Well, peace to me is joy, is that I have, li- I have found how to find joy in the middle of my troubles and hardships because I know for a fact that this too shall pass. I know for a fact that this adversity that I'm going through is preparing me for something that I ask God for. I know it because I've seen it happen over and over and over again. So even when I'm getting tossed, even when I'm being talked about, even when it seems like it's going all wrong, I manage to have peace a certain amount of joy that I hang on to 
because I have a relationship with my heavenly father that allows me to be still, hold my peace, let him fight my battles. Oh, I can't count the times I've wanted to say something. Oh, I can't tell you how many times I wanted to straighten some people out. Oh, I can't count the times when I knew the real facts and I allowed the lies to be told. Can't you say that, y'all? Don't you know how many times you've known the truth about you in spite of what they were saying? Do you know how many times you knew the real deal when they was explaining it in the other deal? That you wanted to say something that could have straightened it all out, but you didn't because you didn't have to because he fights my battles. He holds my peace. So as the swirl goes on around me in this world and they say, you ain't going to get this, you ain't going to get that. I look up and I realize I have everything that I've not been denied anything in my life. And it didn't matter what nobody said. That same peace, that same joy is available to you. That relationship with God can be yours. All you got to do is open up your heart and accept him. Just say, hey, come into my life. I accept you. I believe in you. I need your help today. Because I, I can't do this by myself. Just say it. Try it. I dare you. I bet your life will start going better. Bet. What you bet. Try it. Those are my closing remarks today. Hope it helps somebody. Hey, listen, y'all. Uh, talk to God. He'd love to hear from you, okay? See you tomorrow. <laughs> For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 